everybody. This is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and these are your horoscopes for the month of April 2019. So this is the sun and rising sign horoscope for Libras. Um, there's so many transits going on this month that the way that I'm doing it is to uh, break things up thematically. So you'll see what I mean as I go. I'm not using my software to go through each individual um, uh, transit because it would take forever and they're all really kind of happening at once. Most of the time they're sort of jammed together. So let's just go through these um, thematically. Uh, one of the biggest things happening this month for Librans involves the moon cycle. Um, for starters, the new moon on April 5th is landing in your seventh house, which is the house of relationships, anything that you're absorbed into. And with an Aries new moon, we're talking about the initiation of uh, something perhaps in relationships, something new starting in a relationship, uh, a new relationship itself, a new chapter, or a new um, kind of uh, a, a fresh start for a relationship. Um, so you got that spring initiating energy in the house of relationships this month. And then what's so uh, interesting about this is that you're, you're looking at... Um, <clears throat> just illustrate this for you. You're looking at a full moon that will land in Libra in your home sign on the 19th. And then the whole month, both the sun and then the full moon will make squares to Saturn and Pluto in the fourth house. So these cardinal houses or angular houses are very powerful. So for Libras, it's a big month because the moon cycle is really hitting the most active or dynamic houses in your chart. The first house is, of course, related to you. So the full moon landing in your home sign, there you're looking for the balance between you, your own needs, your own love of beauty and fairness and justice and you know harmony. And the seventh house need to initiate something uh, that's very strong, very assertive, maybe more of the topics of independence or even power struggles in relationships. Uh, and Aries you know, an Aries new moon in the seventh is initiating something new, but we're talking about something Mars-like. Mars in the meantime is in your ninth house this month, the house of higher beliefs and the higher mind. So you might be looking at a theme of intellectual or mental conflict in relationships or trying to pioneer or start something new in relationships that is based on, um, you know, some, some very strong individual need that you're having or that a partner's having. But the Libra full moon in your first house is not only a call for compromise and balance and, and, and kind of fairness this month in relationships as a counterpoint to the strong assertive Aries quality in your relationship house, but it's also a reminder to really make sure that you're taking care of yourself. The relationship emphasis can be so strong with the new moon in the seventh that you can forget yourself a little bit and forget that, you know, you like, you know, Venus ruled signs, Taurus as well, like Libra, likes to take things a little bit slower, likes to make sure that all of the parts are singing along together nicely. So that balance is really important this month between self and other. Um, likely again with Mars in your ninth house for there to be a really strong emphasis on mental or intellectual things. Um, as well as philosophy, teachers, and some degree of uh, conflict or, um, you know, action and energy being placed on the higher mind. Then the entire moon cycle is squaring Saturn and Pluto in the fourth house of home, family, and foundations. So the issues that we're talking about are also going to have a, an unavoidable tie-in or connection to issues surrounding things like home and property, family and parents, family karma, what supports you or forms the foundation of your life. So these are big issues in relationships. It's not just philosophical, you know, mumbo jumbo. We're talking about um, ideas, thoughts, and uh, contested emotions, you know, in, in relationships. And it's surrounding root level things. It's, it's relating back to where we come from and what we need to feel at home in the world or the ground that we stand on, very fundamental issues. So that's a feeling for the moon cycle, right? But the other thing that's happening this month that's so very powerful is you have this lineup of planets 
in Pisces in your sixth house. And they're all making squares, going through squares to uh, Jupiter and Sagittarius. And then eventually Mars will make a square to Neptune and Sagittarius as well. So the third house, ninth house dynamic is also making this sort of T-square to all the planets in Pisces in your sixth house. It's, you know, like I said, that's why I said it's like there's a whole lot this month that's just kind of jumbled up. Um, the month begins with, on April 2nd, Mercury getting into a conjunction with Neptune. Then by April 10th, Venus gets into a conjunction with Neptune. On the 12th, Venus will square Jupiter. By the 15th, Venus will square uh, Jupiter. Mercury squares Jupiter, excuse me, on the 12th. And then the 15th, Venus squares Jupiter. Uh, right, And then by the 26th, 27th, Mars in... Uh, Gemini will make a square to uh, Neptune in Pisces. So just a lot going on between that third, ninth, and sixth house dynamic. Let's talk about the sixth house, third house dynamic first. So first of all, the sixth house was traditionally the house of strife. Any transits happening in your sixth house mean you typically mean that there is a, a degree of conflict, misfortune, setbacks, grueling work, health problems. I mean, it's not fun stuff. I just generally say when there's a big, you know, lineup plowing through somebody's sixth house, I say this month might not be easy. There may be setbacks that come in a water sign. They may be more emotional. Um, and then you look at where the other planets are to get a sense of what they may be indicating in particular. Well, the good news is that they're all in Jupiter's sign and Jupiter and with aspect to Jupiter, which means that blessings and benefits, Jupiterian things will come out of whatever emotional hardships are happening this month. Uh, whatever communication problems you might have with Mercury and Neptune, whatever romantic uh, escapades come about that might be a little bit more difficult or heart-wrenching with Venus and Neptune in the sixth house of misfortune. Um, something good can come out of it. Um, you, there may be something to learn. You may find teachers. You may be moved philosophically or spiritually by the things that you're experiencing. The desire to help others or to be of service might be pronounced or the desire to do something for the sake of the good of others. These are the kinds of things that can come about because there's a positive relationship to Jupiter. But make no mistake about it, with Mars also eventually making a square from the ninth house in Gemini to Neptune in the sixth house, the question of uh, higher beliefs and ideas and facing doubts or uncertainties, certain kinds of conflicts about uh, how to do things, what direction should I take? I could see this month for Libra as being a month where there are some very difficult decisions to make. And like, what's the criteria for making the judgment call? How do I choose which way to go? Conflicting loyalties. Ninth house loyalties are philosophical, ethical, political, spiritual. Third house loyalties are like home and family. The home and, home and family types of loyalties. In the ancient world, the third house was... Your responsibility, for example, to people in your neighborhood or your siblings or your cousins or um, the responsibility that you might have to home and hearth or to your neighborhood or, like I said, your, like your community. Um, so could maybe some degree of conflicting duties or responsibilities or trying to figure out how to resolve conflicts or tensions that are ultimately about values and priorities and relationships I think those things may also be really pronounced this month as a backdrop to the tension between houses one and seven that we're seeing that self other dynamic. So I, I, I'm guessing that, you know, navigating through the month ahead is going to have a lot to do with um, making sure that you don't sell, sell out on your core values, but don't be too rigid and uncompromising either. So that's kind of a summary of what I'm seeing for you Librans this month. Like I said, it's kind of, it's a jumble. I'm not doing the sort of linear date thing like I usually would because it's all just sort of wrapped in one this month, but the transits are pretty seamlessly related from start to finish. Like for example, you've got between the first and the 15th, you've got, you know, the new moon and then sun square Saturn and Pluto. And then you've got, you know, all the Mercury, Neptune and Jupiter dynamics. Then on the 19th, you have the full moon in Libra, you know, so it's just, it, it, they're all just kind of, the, the latter half of the month has more to do with finding diplomatic compromise and synthesis between oppositional tensions and relationships. That's for sure. First half may be a little bit more about the conflict. So that's how I'm seeing it. Anyway, I hope that this is helpful. Uh, you'll see one other, couple other things really quick. Um, April 
19th to 23rd, Mercury and Venus will conjoin Chiron in the seventh house in Aries, suggesting, again, topics of healing, words that hurt and words that heal in relationships, the power of ideas in relationships. The 20th to the 23rd, the sun will get involved with Uranus, creating a potential moment of illumination and, and sudden or unexpected change, but usually with profound clarity and brilliance associated with it. And that's happening in the eighth house, which is a house that can create and, or provoke such deep and meaningful changes, even if they're sometimes a little difficult. It's very brief though. So um, yeah, so that's just a, a rundown of the month. I think um, Librans, I think are getting the moon cycle the hardest this month. So uh, let's see how it goes. Tell me how your month goes. Leave me some comments and we'll see you again for May's horoscope. Okay, take care everyone. Bye.